Welcome back to my channel. Life as Tip knows it. Tip here bringing you another whip and chat. If I'm correct, this is whip and chat number 80. Holy cow. I have done a lot of whip and chats. Um, I'm currently working on a long term project. This is Playing with Fire by Romy Lerda. It is from Dreamer Designs, the company Dreamer Designs. I was debating whether or not I should keep going with this kit now that Drills and Chills is officially done um, or put it aside for a kit I was working on before I started Drills and Chills and simply because I don't know where to put this giant kit, um, I'm going to continue to go with it. <laughs> so yeah, and I really do, I'm enjoying working on it. I just have not, I just honestly I just haven't prioritized diamond painting. So, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm filming this on a Sunday afternoon. I'm trying to keep the washi tape intact as I peel this off. Um, yeah, this is, this is, a uh, yeah, this is not going well. <laughs> That's okay, though. That's okay. Uh, I'm filming this, like I said, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, and it will be going out on a Tuesday, most likely, if I can get my poop in a group. Oh my gosh, you all, look at this. This is, this is just fabulous. Oh, okay, that's okay. I'll just have to, the thing is with um, washi tape when it comes off, if you can't see where the, the um, tape is, it can be a little challenging but I'm up to the challenge it's all good it's all good <laughs> so um trying to think where to start it has been an interesting week for me um I well let's do diamond painting stuff first let's start there so I told you what this kit was I don't really switch up my accessories. I know that a lot of whipping chats, it's all about like accessories and stuff, but what I use is just a Diamond Art Club pen and a Diamond Art Club boat. I did try the Dreamer Designs boat and it just, I love the size of it. I just could not get on board with the pouring spout. It was not working for me. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of videos coming up that I've already filmed. Some are some uh, unboxings of different smaller kits. I'm trying to get this to line up. Come on, my friends, my diamond friends. This is, I don't know. What the heck's going on with my diamonds? They seem to be like, look at all this trash in here. Like little tiny specks. This must have been the bottom of the bag for sure. Um, so I have some unboxings coming up that I've already filmed. I have another shop with me video. Well, this one that's going to be released this upcoming Fridays is um, when I was at Joann's. I have a really bad memory because in my last shop with me video in Joann's, I was like, Oh, these are so cute. And then this other one that I just did, I forgot that I'd said that lot in the last shop with me. And I'm like, I've never seen this before. And I totally had. So yes, some of those diamond paintings are similar than the other shop with me, but I'm, I still decided to post it just, just in case you miss the other shop with me or you're interested if it varies per month and location. I always check out the clearance section in uh, for diamond paintings too at craft stores. You, I've, been, I've been finding a lot there. I have not been purchasing them because I cannot. I don't know. I just I haven't prioritized diamond painting because I've been using my knitting machine. So I might as well talk about that. <sighs> you know I love knitting hats. I think it's fun. It's very. Um, exciting to be able to get done with knitting hats in a reasonable time with this knitting machine and I think it makes really pretty hats 
I always feel this rush of excitement making products. And then when I go to actually promote them, I get really nervous. And so that was a little bit of today was I finally like posted everything on my Etsy shop of the hats I've made and on my like personal social media page, um, like to my family and friends, I like made a post showing them my hats and it's just, it, it feels very vulnerable to do that. Like, even though I like what I made, I don't, I, you know, I'm very protective and kind of afraid to, um, put myself out there. You know, it's, it's just a little bit scary when you make something that you think is cool. Um, and other people don't, or, you know, but I did it. I'm proud of myself. I'm being brave. And yeah, I think now that I've like posted it, maybe my little, my obsession with knitting might deplete a little bit and I'll get back to diamond painting. I'd like to do both. Like that's the thing is I wish I had more time in my schedule to just craft all the time. Like I, I want more time to craft. These diamonds are just not working well for me. They're all stuck together. Man, I thought that the quality of these drills was really good, but I'm not liking this. I think I'm going to I have other just black drills that came with a lot. So I'm going to pour these back in and just kind of use these if I have to, but go to better ones. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Choking on my own spit. Isn't that glamorous? <laughs> um, Let's see. So yeah. That's kind of been my world as far as like crafting. I just wish I had more time, you know, can I create more time? That would be great. The time change was today. I actually did not realize we were doing a time change because I thought there was kind of this conversation and buzz last year about the time changes going away. And so I guess I was just like a little bit confused. That we actually do, like, we fell back. Uh, you know? And I actually really like the extra hour of sleep. I know it messes people up. It messes um, up, especially if you're a parent. Because kids' circadian rhythms are not necessarily going to align with time changes. But I'm down for it. I'm down for it. It makes it definitely a more cozy feel to be at home and have it be nighttime for longer. So I guess there's going to be less playing outside for sure um, with Denise. But it makes you kind of appreciate time more, in my opinion. But I know a lot of people are very opinionated about not liking time the time change. I'm curious what your opinion is. Comment below if you would like. <laughs> <sighs> um, what else is going on or what I want to get you caught up on the big thing that happened was I had a joint birthday party with a friend with like one of my best friends and it was definitely an interesting experience like purposefully so so my friend and I both, when we were teenagers, loved this actor named Steve Zahn. And I probably talked about Steve Zahn on my channel before. <laughs> um, but, like, we we liked him so much that, I don't, I, I don't know why, I think it was like, he just seemed like a funny, nice guy. And as a teenager, you know, you get crushes. Like, a lot of people like Leonardo DiCaprio, which I did too. But, like, Steve Zahn was, like, our thing. And it kind of, like, it really bonded us together. We did these, like, really silly things, like movie marathons. And we called them Steve Fest. Uh, and it was, like, the Steve Zahn Film Festival that we created. We did really weird things. Like, we had a little parade, which really was just us, like, marching outside. I don't know. We were so weird. <laughs> um... But we, like, my friend and I decided 
to like pretend we're teenagers again and throw ourselves a birthday party, a joint birthday party that Steve's on themed. And <laughs> it was actually, I don't know, I guess definitely this week's theme is feeling vulnerable for me because I, I did like the party, but I was very nervous about this party. I, I did not want people in my like adult life to see me like revert back to this really strange side of me and like do I still have a crush on Steve's on now not not necessarily like I think he's he's attractive and you know he's a good actor I I respect him but am I like obsessed with him no like I've I don't even watch the current movies and shows he's in um it's just very nostalgic for me. So I was nervous all week about that. Uh, like we host a lot of parties, my husband and I, we, and we play board games and all the, like I get some social anxiety around that, but this has been the first party that like the reason we have the party is for me. Like it's always like a birthday party for Bill or a, um, a barbecue, but I've never like asked people to come over for my birthday as an adult. And it, it just felt very, um, nerve wracking. Like, I don't know. It, it turned out to be really fun. We, I made like a playlist of like all of these songs from different Steve's on movies, um, different clips from different movies he's been in and interviews and I had like Steve's on decorations probably the like kind of creepiest thing that I own is when I was a teenager and eBay was a big thing that was like the dawn of the internet I feel like um one of Steve Zahn's classmates had for sale a yearbook that it was his classmate's yearbook but Steve Zahn was in it and totally like 13 year old me bought that yearbook and I still have it because like, I don't know, it's such a weird thing. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to just throw it away. So we had the yearbook on display. <laughs> it sounds really weird to say it out loud, <laughs> but it was a very fun party. We, we just, and we intentionally made it really, really weird. We had like all of these like randomly themed things we even had a pinata <laughs> and for someone who's never actually used a pinata we didn't really think about how to hang the pinata uh there was like intentionally really strange items in the pinata like uh tiny tiny moose figurines like it's so weird to say out loud and I'm bummed because like part of the reason I wanted, I wanted to embrace the weirdness was because I, I wanted people to be like, that's the weirdest party I've ever been to. And I, I kind of made a joke about that. And one of the guests was like, actually, no, one party I went to when I was in college, there was this fight that broke out and two guys that were naked were just like wrestling each other in the front yard. And I'm like, well that's not going to happen at this party, hopefully. Uh, and so, yeah, it was not the weirdest for some people. <laughs> that's okay though. It was fun. My friend who I was celebrating with made the best Mexican food. It was so good. Um, so I don't know, it was a chance to connect with people. We played something called the Ungame, which I've talked about before. The Ungame I'll just like summarize it is a game where you the whole purpose of it is listening and not interrupting people and hearing what they have to say and um yeah I it it got a little deep not as deep as the one time we played it because they have very in-depth questions like intense questions a lot of times I just I I'm willing to like open up with people but I just don't really it's like I get a bit of stage fright with how to answer questions with that game. So I'm really grateful that I didn't um, get anything that was like super hard to answer. That was good. 
<laughs> Overall, it was a really fun party. I am missing Denise. So Denise got to hang out with her gram grandma all week and my mom. And then, you know, it's just, it's always, you know, positive and negative. Um, I've had a lot of time today to get the house cleaned after a party, especially, you know, it's like totally like we needed to clean up. I got some chores done. One thing that I'm really not a fan of is raking leaves. And I got a head start on that because our leaves are finally starting to change color. I can't believe it's already November. It's November and like our leaves still are on the tree. Like I remember last year at this time, I think all of the leaves were off of our trees. So it's funny when I was raking the leaves outside, I was kind of like thinking maybe I should try to get some of the leaves to fall off the tree while I'm raking just to rake them all up in one swoop. <laughs> I did it a little bit. I thought, nah, it's not really worth it. But I guess the act of raking, it's just going to need to be a like, not a one-time thing, but a as-needed thing. I almost want to try to build it into my, my schedule to rake a little bit every day. And it's now that I'm thinking about what the time change is going to have to be right when I get home from work. Maybe that's what Denise and I do after I get home from work. It's just she's outside for a little bit while I rake. And then we go inside. Maybe a bag a day. <laughs> and I've talked about why raking so important in our front yard. It's just um, things, the, the leaves will make the gutter not work. And then we'll just have a, when it snows, which it already has, we've had a pretty, pretty big snowstorm this year already. Um, when it snows, then if rakes, or if, if leaves are in the gutter, there it'll just be like a lake in front of our house so <sighs> at least i got all the leaves out of the gutter i felt weird because i was using a rake to get the leaves out of the gutter and then my all my neighbors were outside across the street and i was kind of like oh yay they're gonna they're seeing that i'm taking i'm trying to keep on top of the yard because i don't know about y'all and it totally depends on the neighborhood I'm envious of people who live in apartments because there is definitely in my neighborhood this perceived judgment if you don't keep up with your yard. And there's different levels of people being available to do yard work. Like I don't, of course, like it's about prioritizing time, but like some of my neighbors, they don't work at all. And they're just, they're just in their yard. They're just doing yard work and that's their full-time job. And it's like, that is not me, but hey, check it out. I am trying to keep on top of it. So the, it also kind of backfired that they were out though. Like I was, part of me is like, oh yay, they're seeing that I'm taking care of this. And part of me was like, uh, crap, because I don't know the adequacy like all the rules around leaf blowers. And if you do, if you have more experience, let me know. Because like, I think leaf blowers, they can be kind of a jerk move if you like just blow all your leaves in someone else's yard. Maybe I'm thinking too much about it, but like a lot of the leaves that I raked, they are not from our trees. Like the leaf shape, leaf shape was different. Um, you know, like, and of course, like the wind blows, you cannot completely control that, but I would not put it past these neighbors to not rake their yard and just blow all their leaves to someone else's yard and make it someone else's problem. <laughs> so like I was planning before I knew that all the neighbors were out, I was planning on doing a combo of both where I'm picking up most of the leaves. But you know how like when leaves get all like crusty and they, they kind of disintegrate, it's really hard to pick them up and put them in a, a bag, you know? So I was going to like kind of just try to get most of the leaves and then use a leaf blower to get all the rest of the, like everything in our driveway and gutter t down the street. But I stopped because I thought I don't want them to... I don't know. I just don't know if that's a rude thing to do or if that's what you're supposed to do. Like the yard doesn't look like fabulous. It, I could tell that I 
did I raked leaves because I knew what it looked like. But like, I bet like when my husband gets home, he's picking up my daughter right now. Um, I wonder if he's going to even see that there's a difference because there's still leaves in the yard. There's still leaves in the gutter, but it's just way less. So, you know, the leaf blower would have definitely made us have like a crisp look. Like it looks really nice. But I just don't know if that's, that's the nice thing to do. <laughs> I'll wait until my neighbors are not out and try again. Well, here's the thing is I'm going to be raking. There's so many leaves left. So I'd rather you bust out the leaf blower when I really feel like I'm at a spot where I'm not going to be consistently raking our yard. That's kind of my plan in action. So, yes. I don't know. Do you own a leaf blower? If you are living in a house. And it also is having a snowblower worth it. Because that is a possible Christmas list um, item. And I don't know. I just don't know too much about snowblowers. <laughs> Home ownership. Yay. Um, let's see. What else was I? I made some notes. Um... Yeah, I mean, I was going to kind of recap my work week. It's hard to do that because it's not really my place to talk about other people or get really in depth with, you know, I think it's a privacy thing. Um, but lately, I don't know, like I said, that idea of being vulnerable really has been the theme this week. Um, I'm dealing with a situation at work where... I could have handled something differently and I'm feeling stressed about that, you know, and then, um, we did like this kind of personality test and I've done this test many times before and I know myself pretty well, but the results were explained to me in a different way this time and it absolutely makes sense, but like the way I act and interact with people, it totally makes sense to me now that, like, I know something with that test. Um, but it's hard to let everybody in and let them know my personality type. Um, because I don't want it to be considered a weakness. I'm very much guarded and very much, like, feel that I have to defend myself. Because I always feel like I have to um, overcompensate. And I'm tired of doing that to myself. I'm tired of, like, not having faith in myself. So, it reminded me of this quote I found. And the quote says, um, Nothing holds you back more than your own insecurities. And, oh my gosh, that's so true. And I talk about this a lot. I talk about being insecure a lot. And I wish it was just like a switch that I could turn off in my brain. Um, that would be so nice to be able to just like turn off my insecurities in my brain. But I can't. And I'm trying to find that there's strength in struggling with self-confidence. Um, or just kind of being an overthinker. Like I care a lot. I... Um... I want to do well with things. I want people to like me. I want, yeah. I mean, I think everybody feels that way, but I don't know. I figure because I'm feeling vulnerable, I should talk about feeling vulnerable. You know, that transparency piece. And that's how I'm feeling for sure. I'm feeling, I'm feeling vulnerable. I'm putting my, my, myself into the world and sometimes the world's not so nice. Or sometimes the world isn't even that bad, but I I make it worse because it's a defense mechanism. So, that was really all I had to talk about. Um, I know it's a short whip and chat. I just don't have much to share. I might go to doing whip and chats every other week. I'm still on the fence with that. But I wa did have one more quote. That really stood out to me. And it says, you belong here. And 
you are capable of shaping the world around you. If you are ever in doubt, consider the way the rain can move mountains over time because it is so relentlessly insistent of its place. And you know what? Like sometimes, sometimes I tuck myself out of where I belong. I know I belong here. I know, I know I'm capable of doing good things and I know my worth. And this is my reminder to you that if you're struggling with knowing your worth or where you belong, maybe, maybe you do have the answer you need and you just need to take a moment to collect yourself and find, find that part of you. Cause it's there. It's there. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this whip and chat. Thanks so much for watching, listening. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. I'm so close to my goal. I really want to reach it. Please help me get to 500 subscribers. That would just make my day. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see you next week's whip and chat. Bye. Oh.